Hello, friends in Christ. This is the sermon that I offered at the Zoom on Sunday, uh, the first Sunday in Lent. I was blessed this week uh, with many hopeful signs of God's reality, one of which was um, putting the ashes on foreheads for Ash Wednesday. I got to look into almost a hundred pairs of eyes as I said those words, remember you are dust and to dust you shall return. And I got to witness their unforgettable eyes as they turned inward in reflection, as they filled with tears, and as they curled with gratitude. It's heartening. It's a heartening sign of God's loving reality. When I see the willingness of so many people to come to church, to bow down, to reflect on their lives during the season of Lent. Maybe one of the most important things that makes us Christian is to be people who search for, seek out signs of God's promise, God's loving support, God's saving hand for humankind especially, especially amid fears and heartaches and challenges. Christians, look for the promise of God. The story of Noah's Ark is part of the lessons for the first season, first Sunday in Lent. The story of Noah's Ark, it's more than a, a pop-up book Fisher Price story, right? It's an adult lesson, truly, on where to search for God, how to find God, especially during traumatic and stressful times. The Great Flood is documented in every culture of the time in antiquity. Every one of them, every uh, tribe had its own interpretation of why those deadly waters flooded homes and villages. It was such a catastrophic event that they wrote these stories down or they shared these stories uh, word of mouth to one another over generations and generations that their children, their children's children, and their children's children's children would remember what happened and would learn from the warnings that were inside all of their stories. We search for meaning. That's what humans do amid the random events. We say, how, what meaning can we find? Noah interpreted the flood as a sign of judgment from the creator of the universe, almighty God. Those waters that flood Noah proclaimed should be understood as a new beginning for humankind. That through the torrents of water, the earth is washed clean, washed clean of violence, corruption, all forms of greed and selfishness. Noah was proclaiming that this is a new start. And the proof of this interpretation, he said, was written in the sky above in the beauty and mystery of a rainbow. Noah's Ark became a story of the importance of trusting God, like Noah did, and a tale to remind generations that human behavior matters. And abiding in a relationship with God brings forth the longed-for, peaceful, loving world. So here we are in 
2021, interpreting this ancient story of Noah. We can we could think of this story as a pre-scientific tribal superstitious delusion. <laughs> or we can interpret it as something more. God's loving, hopeful reality is mediated and interpreted by us. As I was meditating on this Noah's Ark and, and all of this this week, a story from a long time ago in my pastoral ministry came to mind. An older gentleman wanted to come and tell me about what was going on in his family. So we found a time and together we met and he described a very messy divorce. He was in the middle of it, even though it was one of his children. And everyone in the family was calling him, goading him to take sides. Adult children, adult grandchildren were angry, refusing to talk to each other, cutting off relationships with each other, making ultimatums. And there he was sitting in front of me, heart wrenched. The unhealthy immaturity of his family surfaced through this divorce and it was gutting him. He knew that his future would never be the same after. Of course, he was looking at me and, and there's nothing I could say that would fix it. And he was right. The peaceful, happy family dinners where everyone was together were over. But I could see something that he could not see. I could see hope. And I reminded him, I said, everyone in your family is looking to you. You're the patriarch here. And you, and you alone can mediate something of God into your family. You can be the one that brings hope. You can be the one that shows the power of forgiveness Amid it all, stays faithful to prayer and to love everyone involved with depth and authenticity and true listening. All he saw were the problems and his grief was blinding him. But I could see, I could see God at work bringing hope to his family through him. We are like Noah. We are like that bow, that rainbow in the sky. We are signs of God's reality amid our own historic, unprecedented personal and communal times that we find ourselves. Believe it. Our reflective time of Lent begins with the words, you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Noah's interpretation is similar to Jesus' interpretation of the failings of humankind. God isn't judging us in the form of our family problems that we face or cancer that comes, the piles of snow outside, the glaciers that are melting, the power outages. They aren't proof that God is angry with us through wildfires and hornets and all that goes wrong. Instead, amid all of this, we are to remember that people, 
carry the image of God's hopeful, peaceful, loving, forgiving reality into the world. And when we take time to reflect on, on doing this, when we take time to reflect on how we fail at it, when we bow in remorse for the failures of our own and the failures of humankind, when we reflect on mediating God's generous, loving reality, it is absolutely the most hopeful sign of all. Like Jesus, who was baptized in the Jordan River and then immediately sent out to be tempted by Satan into the desert. So our own baptisms bring with them temptations. On the first Sunday of Lent, we always read through the entire list of potential sins in the litany of penitence. A great litany enumerates all the ways that humankind has failed. One of the oldest liturgies in the Book of Common Prayer. But this Sunday, I want you to reflect on some temptations that you might not focus on. The temptation to not take our faith as important as it truly is to the people around us. A temptation to stop looking for the signs of God's grace repairing us in our world. The temptation to be overwhelmed and despair at all the heart-wrenching problems around us. In Lent, we remember, even as we enumerate the failings of humankind, that God has overcome sin and evil. There is no failure that is stronger than God. So I invite you this first week of Lent to search for signs of God's loving and abiding presence with humankind. To search for ways for you to be that sign to your families, to your neighbors and coworkers. You are the bow in the sky. You are the sign of God's great loving and abiding hope. And for this, we bless the name of God. Amen.